have Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars, in with us. Let's just jump to the hard questions. <laughs> yes, Our question, exactly. A moment ago, we asked Cougar Nation, if you could be guaranteed 7-5 and five, next year at this time after a season in the Big 12, would you take it right now if you could? Well... You always want to have loftier aspirations, right? So you're right. saying you're, you're, you're taking not, that off the table. This isn't about aspirations. This is about <laughs> reality. Uh, I, I'd love to be better, but if that were the low bar, yeah. But think about getting to seven wins as we are breaking. We, we just, a winning we, record in the Big 12 is big, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, you look at the at the conference right now. There are I think I think six teams within five and seven or seven and five. A six-team logjam in that in that two-game window, um, and there are eight teams between four and eight and eight and four. There's a lot of compression there, and so to be above 500 with that kind of competition would be outstanding. Yeah, we we were we kind of put a mock schedule together. I just threw something together. I said, hey, what if they? We know the first three games. What if they played these five teams at home or these four teams at home, and then these four or these five on the road? And our our goal was put a check mark by the automatic wins. We only found three check marks. Yeah. And, and so then the rest are kind of, there's a bunch there in the middle of that, hey, I could go either way. And then there's some that, boy, that's going to be tough, especially if you don't have uh, Jaron Hall back. Oh, and, if and you're we, going with a new quarterback yeah. starting from scratch. Yeah. So if, if let, yeah. let's assume you're starting from scratch with quarterback and Jaron goes. And now we'll just make that assumption. We don't know that yet. But but if he does, then is 7-5 a little bit better in your mind? Oh, that would be beyond outstanding if you're doing it with somebody that's brand new to the program at that point. Uh, projections are so hard. Baylor, would they finish up 6-6? Six and six? I'm not sure that when BYU played Baylor, even after, even after Baylor lost to BYU, that, 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 that we thought 6-6 six and six would be their season. That's where they are. That's a good football program. Uh, yeah, they're making, defending champion. And they're making coaching changes uh, right. at 6-6. At, at, at six and six. Um, There's a lot of, in fact, on that note, uh, BYU was a rare team that didn't have a coaching change. Uh, we, we had this out last week on social media, but BYU and Stanford were two of only five programs not to have any coaching changes. Uh, five out of 130 plus teams that don't have a change. So you're very much an outlier. So what's happening right now in the Big 12 and elsewhere is very much par for the course. Um, it kind of took me off topic, but the, the point is Baylor at six and six, they've got to make some changes. Are you so emotionally prepared for a rocky road? And is Cougar Nation prepared for a rocky road. The whack was tough in the beginning, but BYU dominated it. The Mountain West was challenging toward the end after BYU dominated mm -hmm. it. Independence was all over the place, but here comes. I, I think it does require a shift in mindset because um, you're going to go from from contending for fewer conference championships, but perhaps being in contention for mo more postseason opportunities. Uh, and whether that's better bowls in football's uh, standpoint or in the other sports, is getting to the NCAA tournament. Because as we know, in the Big 12, middle of the pack or lower gets you in the NCAA AC, tournament. Yeah. Whereas in the WCC, you've got to be top two or maybe three at best. So I think, it, you know, that has to be the shift is we, BYU may not win as many titles, but may be contending for more postseason opportunities because of the depth of the Big 12. We, we, we want to talk about basketball a little bit. Let's... I want to ask you one more football question. You mentioned that Stanford and BYU were the only two teams that didn't have a two of five, two of five nice that, that yeah, didn't yeah. have. Um, and now we know there are already coaching changes. Right. We know that these, uh, Elisa right. tu, uh, Tuyaki is moving on, and then David Shaw has announced that he's stepping down. So a whole right. regime change over, over at Stanford. Um, th there could be some others on BYU staff. Does do coaching changes their defensive coordinator for BYU um, impact? your view on how BYU performs next year. What, what kind of impact is that going to have, coaching changes on the defensive side of the ball? Well, I, I, I mean, when things are going well, it's okay to kind of keep the gang together, I guess you'd say. But, but, but transition and turnover in coaching staffs, that is the norm, not the, not, 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 not the exception. So BYU would be in the club with everyone else if they're making these kind of changes. I think a fresh approach is always going to be welcome, especially if you feel like you didn't maximize your potential. And there's no doubt that when BYU went through that four-game skid this year, they felt they weren't maximizing their potential. And so I guess at that point, you could argue that you know, some kind of refreshment was needed um, you know, with this program. Uh, I think the bowl game is big, though, N not necessarily for affecting how many changes are made, but for how this team goes into the Big 12. Uh, a a four-game win streak to end the year and, and an 8-5 and five season, it just feels a little better than, than, than what they're currently at if they were to, say, lose their bowl game. I, I think that the last year's bowl game kind of left a sour taste. I think everyone kind of reflected back on that and said that was a poor representation of BYU at that point. And so less about what BYU um, 
expects to get from its postseason should be more about what BYU can give in this postseason. Uh, I bet I, I think they would agree to a man that, that the effort wasn't what it should have been last year. Um, and it was a rough situation uh, with the weather and everything else. But that said, um, they didn't represent the way they wanted to. Be an interesting couple of weeks ahead. Tomorrow we'll all be at uh, Vivid Arena for basketball in South Dakota. And speaking, you used the word refresh a moment ago. Uh, Mark Pope had to refresh his roster significantly. Yeah. Uh, and now some of these young guns like Jackson Robinson, um, and, uh, and the return missionaries that have come in and Noah Waterman, they're starting to hit their shots. Now mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's some potential here. And yet, let, let's, let's pause for a moment and think where BYU, if you, thought, if you said BYU is going, to the, going into this season with all the novelty they had, but wouldn't have Trevin Nell or Spencer Johnson on top of that. Wow. And that's where they are right now. Now, granted, uh, Spencer is more of a short-term injury. The hope is uh, Trevin's recovering from a longer-term situation. But to be where they are right now uh, with some positivity, despite the fact they're without two of their, you know, guard line anchors, if you will, they expected to have at this point. So it did offer more minutes for Jackson Robinson to start and play early and now for Richie and Dallin to get in and play a lot more meaningful minutes. And so, um, you know, not, not necessarily blessing in disguise, not having Trevin or now Spencer, but the minutes were there and the guys who have filled them have given us, I think, a pretty promising glimpse into the future. What, this is Mark Pope's first return missionary class. Um, he's now getting his guys. Right. So yeah. his yeah. guys they recruited that went off. You know, he's he's had some of his guys, but have come right in and play. But this is the first group, this three especially, mm -hmm. that went out. On, he recruited, went out on missions, came back, and now are starting to contribute. What's your um, evaluation of them so far, early? Uh, we, we saw our first glimpse of Tanner Tools the other night, and that, and that's in a non-division one game. But what Richie and Dallin have given BYU so far. Dallin's now hitting his threes. Took a while for him to get his first one, right. but now he's hitting those. Um, I, I think you know if, if you were to say that um, that Dallin has the inside track to be your point guard, taking you into the Big 12, you'd feel comfortable with that. And and Richie Saunders has proven a versatility and a tenacity and a length and a range of abilities that makes you really optimistic about where this thing is going. Um, They'll need more pieces um, in the season to come. Um, and, and Coach has already proven very uh, willing to explore the portal for whoever will come to BYU that is a good fit. And that's an exciting part about it, too. There are some players who will contribute next year that we don't know at this point who they're going to be. But yet the ones we do identify, we can feel really good about. And Jackson Robinson, too, I think, is he's not, he's not a freshman coming in, but um, came in as a starter right away and is really looking good. Again, there's a smoothness about him and understatedness about his game that is just so cool. Mark Pope had told us in our, in our pregame prep meetings that, uh, that Waterman, he thinks, is a year away from being sensational. Uh, he's hitting over 50% of his threes. He's big and tall. And, mm -hmm. and you can tell he's, you know, he's still adjusting to life with the big boys, but great potential out on the wing for a big guy. Yeah, and, and, and Coach wants from Noah and some others just, you know, to guard a little better, uh, a little more, a little more consistently. And that's team-wide, and BYU should find itself in pretty decent shape. I think it's going to be an interesting and competitive WCC season this year, too. There have been enough WCC teams that have already pulled off impressive wins in the non-conference campaign. I look forward to what's to come. And then when you talk about going frying pan to fire with the, with the Big 12 next oh, year, man. oh, my yeah. gosh. That, that, that's uh, what I wanted to talk about next. It's yeah, like we, I, we keep talking about, hey, is seven okay for football and everybody's going no they've got to be better than that and then I look at basketball and go oh my goodness are fans ready for that league yeah, are we I think, ready for I think that six league? or seven of the ten teams right now are at one or zero losses and they're playing good games um, it's 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 going to be something we've never seen before <laughs> I, I think there will be some teams that come to the Marriott Center who would ne otherwise never ever come here right? right they would never come unless unless being required to as they will be and there will be some teams who take L's I think in the Marriott Center just because of the venue and because of the atmosphere and and if it's a tight game the Marriott Center will help BYU win I, I think a handful of those tight games every year I think under the radar was uh, what Texas did to Gonzaga yeah, left. just destroyed them. Yeah. And Gonzaga is the creme de la creme of the WCC. Yeah, uh, and I'm paying and a lot more attention to the Big 12 these days. And yeah. the Big 12 Big East Challenge is going on right, right now. Some nice wins there as well. Uh, it's just going to be uh, a, a total eye opener. The venues, uh, the crowds, the vibes. It, it's, it's almost a total 180 from the WCC. You get it in a building or two, a granted at a smaller scale. And now you're going to get it pretty much everywhere you go at a massive scale. It's going to be so fun to have those yeah. teams just rotate through here yeah. that are required in league yeah. play to come here every year. We're going to see
see Kansas and, and you know great great teams teams that have been in Final Fours teams that have won national championships that's that's going to be fun yeah Th this team you mentioned they'll have some new faces even next year because Mark's going right. to look to the transfer portal um, this group that's here right now though um, where have you seen them grow the most? And, and then what are you looking most forward to as this season progresses with this group? Well, you know, when Coach Pope came in four seasons ago, offensive rebounding was way down the to-do list in terms of things they really focused on. And if you look at his record from year one, two, three, and four, that offensive rebound percentage has gone up every year, incrementally or exponentially, it might feel like right now. They're a really good offensive rebounding, a really good rebounding team overall. They play fast. And, and while the turnover trouble, the turnover number is coming down, let's say where they've improved, the turnover number is coming down. Four straight games, it's come down. The percentage is dropping, which is good. Uh, but they're playing fast, and yet they're playing still pretty efficiently. Again, there's only, I, I tweeted this out the other day. There were one of the only 11 teams that were sitting in the top 70 in, well, in tempo, offensive, and defensive efficiency. It's hard to be all three, to be fast and to be efficient on both ends of the floor. But BYU is that team right now. Again, the numbers aren't going to blow you away. They're in the, you know, the 40s and the 60s. But just to be in that grouping of top 70, it's hard to be good in all three. And BYU is right now. And it's a very low number of teams that are doing all those three things. So I would say improvement in... Um, in taking better care of the ball while still being efficient. Uh, and I think more of a macro is team tenacity and resiliency. They're never really out of a game. They've been out and gotten back in. Right. Uh, they don't lose big. They haven't yet, at least. They don't lose big, haven't lost big. They kind of stay right there. Where they have to get better, uh, the free throw number has got to come up. Yeah. We're an interesting uh, trend of games. Cause the Dayton, Dayton's a good team. That was a big second half in overtime. Yeah. Uh, Westminster's that. Uh, South Dakota's going to be a little better in Westminster. Yeah. Utah Valley a little bit better maybe than South Dakota. And then number seven, Creighton a week from Saturday down in Vegas. And then on the other side Bay. of that, you've got a Utah team that just destroyed Arizona last yeah, night. Yeah, unbelievable. Like destroyed, like Arizona's never in the game. Yeah. They got within five or six maybe at one point, but it was a wire-to-wire -wire win for Utah. So, yeah, this November, December schedule with a relatively new team in terms of players coming together, it's as tough and it, it really it's as good um, a, a maybe – preview platform for what coach Pope is going to have himself dealing with in terms of the big 12 in terms of rigors game to game he really challenged himself this year with this year's team and there have been a couple of nice wins to probably some more to come but the challenges have been uh, really stout hey, I'm really impressed by what he's done to challenge his team yeah, it's been it's been fun with this yeah. new team thank yeah. you for uh, classing we, up the show we, we, hey, no. <laughs> it's all the, they brought the vets in today. Old it's day. all the veterans yeah, 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 yeah. so <laughs> what, hey watch, watch and listen to all of us tomorrow yeah we'll, we'll, all, that, be we'll yeah. all be in the you'll be down low I'll be up high well, well, I'll be I'm jealous yeah. of your view. You, but you may have more room <laughs> because we're, we're not going to crack When we get in, I have to way. climb over three people's heads to get into where we do the game. But we'll all be there tomorrow, so make sure you, you tune in. Listen to Greg. Watch us tomorrow with yeah. that South Dakota game. We're, we're looking forward to that. All